Saturday Showdown. PRX 대 광동 픽스. And they're back on it. They are hovering it once again, and it will be locked in. We do get Cassid in. Uh, you know, we said before, this is kind of going to have to be a win early, win hard game. I feel like that's just been amped up to 11. Uh, we're actually amped up to 16, I would say, <laughs> uh, with the cast in being locked in. And it looks like we are just about ready to hop onto the rift for game number one. So let's do it for Gen G versus Nongshin. Gen G, one, two, three. Gen G, fighting! Yay. Nongshin, one, two, three. Nongshin, fighting! Yeah. Um, despite what some people believe. <laughs> there is still a game to be played, um, and they certainly have that work out. Because Question Runner is one of the best diving duos, like early levels. We've seen it two man dive early, but actually, Sylvie being challenged here by Pays. Yeah, Pays is level one, still has a root on level one as the Q is going to land and misses. And Sylvie does dodge that, but he does still have to flash away. You know, they, they, there was a possibility to counter gank in that situation. Now, he is looking mid on Call Me. He's got to get that stun down with the Unraveled Earth, but uh, this is going to help out Chovy. Not going to secure a kill or anything um, like that. Eliminated to the tower, as this is going to go the way of Canyon and Pays. But uh, Lahens is not having a fun time, and Sylvie's going to pick up an early Infernal Drake for this comp, which is going to feel very nice. And Ocean should be pretty happy about their early start in this game. Yes, here we go. We got level six from Call Me. He's going to try to abyssal dive out of this one as the seismic shove will land. And now Lahens is in a ton of trouble as First Blood should go over to the side of Nongshim. Who will they give the kill to? Um, okay, they did it. They finally did it. Jiwoo will pick up the First Blood. Uh, it's kind of worrying already for Nongshim. They need uh, the mid game to be really crisp in this one. Trying to engage here on a canyon. They do have an immense amount of CC, but they are going into the enemy jungle here. Chovy not going to be able to help out too much as now Canyon also electing not to flash, and this time he will get away, unlike Lahens earlier on. Helps that he is uh, Lee Sin, of course, is on a Hex Drinker and behind 25 CS. Is not a good feel as Canyon is also here, shadowing for the lane that is winning early on. And Sylvia is also trying to help out here, but he's taking a huge amount of damage. Magnus Storm does come in. The double Q3 on a Canyon and Keen is going to push them away. But again, it doesn't really do too much damage at the end of the day. It would have been a pretty great play. Uh, it happen here. Yeah, a little gank from Peter as the uh, ult is going to come through. Lahen's taking a huge amount of damage from this Kalista. Even the Grey Health. Oh, he is actually going to get away. As now the root comes down onto Peter. Pays trying to threaten this one. But uh, yeah, just going to survive. Just barely a pretty close trade down in the bottom lane. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, Chovy now level 11. Got his rower completed. Oh. All right, nice little knock-up, but we do have the Devour here as uh, it might be a little bit of trouble here for Lehenge, but he's got so many shields with the Senna and the Top Kench himself, and he will just survive. And this setup, we have like flanking on flanking, where Chovy's on the bottom side trying to flank, but also Dindin's on the top side trying to flank. They are going to turn onto this one. The Weaver's Wall does come down. Sylvie not finding an engage, though, as Keen with the Equalizer. They're running into the enemy jungle, and the damage from this Equalizer is just gigantic as they are burning them to a crisp. Down will go Canyon, but you can see that Genji does have the advantage in this place. So many low health bars on the side of Nomsim as he Lahen? goes Lahens under the turret. What are you doing, my guy? Maybe just trying to bait them in, and that he will, as Chovy's going to pick up an extra kill on the back side of this fight, and Genji should be able to take down the dragon as well. I mean, what are you going to do? It's it, it's like they're invulnerable in some of these fights, and we saw the Magnus Storm used just desperately for kind of like a defensive purpose to try to peel, and that's not the angle you're going to look for as Canyon goes in. The Equalizer good oh, once again, wow. burning down Sylvie, and call me. Look at the damage. It is insane. You can see already uh, the range advantage going pretty well. It, this is going to be a very nice combo coming in from the side of Nongshim, but do they have the follow-up is always the question. Keen in a lot of trouble as now the Weaver's Wall does come down, and Kalmi just going to execute him in front of them. Dundum also on the flank here, as yes, the Dragon will go the way of Gen G, but... Uh, See just how far away these guys can survive for as Canyon's just going to hit the turret and accept his fate. Does not have a safeguard. Might be a bit of a last ditch effort. Let's see how it does go. They have the rel at least in terms of looking for flips. And you know what? Gen G a little bit sluggish to get in here, but finally they do get on top of Call Me in that back line, but the damage is being done here to this Baron. But look at the kick oh. into the equalizer, and the steal comes in. 
just to add insult to injury as Gen G as a team this time will burn them to a crisp. And that might just be a clean ace if Chovy can catch up to this Renata, which seems quite likely at this point. He's prepped the blade as there it will be. And there is the ace as also Chovy, not quite yet level 16, but good enough. Well, uh, Dindin might need it here as uh, he is trying to hit some sweet spots. The time that he ripped walked on top of them, he did hit him. Still going. But, um, yeah, I, you're, you're not catching it. <laughs> It's I mean, not it's happening, so, guys. It's so ridiculous. It's so... How many did he use that? I didn't actually keep count, but it must have been like eight or something. Yeah. Well, on, we're going to take a look. Okay. Just Two, watch the R cool down. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh. We don't get a full count. <laughs> I think it might have been... You were counting so well, I Hawks. think it might have been 11. I've been practicing. I think it might have been 11 in total. So I think he used two more to get away after that. Well, oh, that equalizer. That is a good amount of poke already onto that back line. Cannon just trying to be zoned away, but uh, yeah, Sylvie doesn't get to play the game, neither does Call Me, as they are just getting the tutorial victory. They're taking out all of the inhibitors. Yeah, kind of death by a thousand cuts or death by a thousand rift walks. Um, yeah. and, and walks as well. Yeah, and walks. Game, yeah. Footsteps. Uh, yeah, nothing really Nongshim could do from here. Aatrox has looked so incredibly powerful in so many of our games here on 14-4. Not this one. <laughs> um, it just looks so sad. You put the chains on the Cassidy and he just rift walks out of it. It's like, man, I used to be a champion. I used to matter! He doesn't at this point in time. Poor Aatrox is, uh, yep, they're going to get it done. Joby just uh, full-time rift walking into the back line as the seismic shove is not going to hit him. And that is going to be the end of the game. Genji take down game number one. And then there was the time they grouped up in mid and, and kind of got caught out. But at the end of the day, it, it wasn't a big enough cut. It wasn't a big enough swing in favor of Nongshim to really get them into a controlling position to not allow Genji to scale. So what did Genji do? They scale. Much of a advantage for Tlia. I honestly think the Ari benefits more in this matchup, but obviously right. we'll be happy to take it. And Let's do it. This, you know what? Why Lock not? Lock it in. Why not? Just try. Just just give it a shot. Yep, there it is. Vein top. Yeah, they're going to give themselves a good crack at a game number two. We'll see if that does lead them in the right direction or if it looks a bit like game number one. As Vein top going to hit the rift for the first time this split as we hop onto it for game number two. Genji, come on, do it. Genji, fighting. Longshim Red Force. Hanadur set. Longshim fighting. Yes. There is a ward in that bush. Dinan also uh, pings it out after seeing the interaction. Um, nice little level one here from Ju and Peter. Uh, and I believe it was on the other side, it was Lahens. Lahens. Oh. Um, okay, he's going to flash this one. It's not going to matter. First blood goes over to Peter on the bottom side of the map, just like that. Yeah, good start. And I believe Jiu just got some, got a decent amount of gold there, but it was actually, yeah, it was uh, Peter who got the kill. I think Jiu might have had the, what's it called? The uh, treasure hunter. I think I saw the 70 gold pop up. So Jiu getting some extra money, even though he didn't get the kill. Uh, and yeah, Ari, a pretty high win rate. And we'll see if that can be maintained here. Big picks as we got to talk about this. It's been almost 1500 days since QV lost to Kana in the top lane. Look at this gank though in mid, the charm comes down. This is super clean from the side of Nongshim, but where's the damage? It's not going to come through. It finally does, oh. but they nearly both die as Fiesta is still taking damage from the cannon. Jeez. Yeah, don't die. That would be bad. Um, they managed to get the kill on a Chovy, which is nice, but the, with the trade back, I don't think Chovy's that bothered and he nearly actually just got a double kill. Maybe just a bit more pranking, you know, coming up, trying to help Keen get through the early stage of the lane. And here he is once again. And it's down tumble. He can condemn Canyon here. Yeah. And the Q is going to miss as well. Doesn't even have to cast it. Yeah. If G, if that Q hit, could be a lot of damage coming through. And yeah. Fiesta's moving down. They're going for that proactive angle. Yeah. And this one is a different situation from game number one where Nongshim were getting wrecked in the top lane and the mid lane was Cassidy. So if you give it to Lee a free farm for a little bit to put on some pressure, it's actually probably fine, especially compared to a Cassidy. As once again, trying to make this play happen, the handshake does come through as Canyon 
is here, but it's still going to be a Flash Force away from Pace, and they're losing a bunch of uh, minion XP and gold here under the turret. Yeah, they're getting zoned out so hard. Canyon's going to try and chase and make something more of this. We actually use Chobi's going to be first in the bot lane. This could be a difference maker. Yeah, but does have Fiesta right behind him. The Flash Charm is not going to land. Fiesta trying to make a difference. You know, I love the idea, but yeah, it just didn't, didn't quite connect. We should see eventually that Dundon will take down turret plates, and just the pressure alone is going to be a lot as stuns come in. The handshake hits the red buff, and that's not going to feel very good, but Canyon's still in a bit of trouble, has to ward hop away. Yeah. And Machovi coming up as well. Oh, you got to back away, Dundon. You don't even need to be stepped up here. Yeah. And the wall will come down. It is a bit short, so he just kind of walks away and tumbles out of that one. But now he's stunned up against the wall, and that's going to be the end of him. And the three of them should be able to take out the vein. That's what Genji have gotten on the top side. I would still like to see them go for it, though. I think, oh, Dundun. Yeah, he's, um, he doesn't have any sums, so even the slow is going to be really uh, a big issue for him. And I eventually, he just gets run down. I feel like you have to anticipate this. You know they're going to be on the top side. You could have gone, you could have gone bot and just picked up wolves in the meantime. You could have just waited at your tier two. You know your team are going for an aggressive play on the bot side. You just shouldn't have walked up. So the cooldown is a fair bit longer. Um, and we're dragging up in a minute, burning that pretty substantial. No aftershock for Sylvie might be a bit of an issue for him, but now the Magna Storm does come in and Canyon doesn't seem to care. He's got the Sundered Sky and he's so tanky. He's healing up all the damage that's going on into him. Charm lands again and he's just going back in. He doesn't care at all as Fiesta just does not have the sustained damage to take him down. And even a wall is going to come out here. Maybe Canyon dies now. Now he's just going to flash away. And Fiesta actually is going to live. Has a bit of a bailout and will be just fine. Meanwhile, on the top side, Dundin going 1v2. As the Q sweet spots are not quite landing, but Dundin just doesn't have the damage right now into Keen. And the 2v1 will work out for Gen G. Oh, Pace does have sums. Hey, he's going to flash away, but that's Callista following on the flash. And the hop on over. Another Q to land, but. Not going to continue chasing. Yeah, got to feel a bit frustrating, frustrating for Nongshim not getting those kills onto both Lee Sin and uh, the center there made things so difficult. And actually, Edge of Night Rush. Chovy in a bit of trouble here. No Unraveled Earth, and Sylvie is on the way as well. He does dodge everything, and there's a big shield, a potential burst, but with the jump in, it is going to be enough. He's getting worried for him there, though, uh, for Fiesta, but he Yo. will be okay. But Regardless, as we're once again up in the top lane bullying Dundin, and down he will go. Hayes does tank that up nicely. Yeah, uh, vein top, perhaps not. All right, well, we're trying to bully another top laner. This time it's not the vein, as the kick is very, very nice from Canyon. And look at Toby, he's not even joining. He's like, yeah, you got this, Canyon. I don't need to be here. Q, one time. No, nope, oh, not going to hit. Oh, Flash man. Gets it done. And That's Fiesta. <laughs> yeah, Fiesta's like, come on, man. Yeah. Gentleman's game. So if you're kind of blaming Dundun for dying along the top lane, it's not just him. And also, even if he had three dashes, it still wouldn't be enough. Is he going to be here on time? Is also another question. King just gets back over the wall. They spot him now. And the sticks are in the Cloud Drake. This should be easy for Callista Rel, but now a massive Wombo Combo comes in. Canyon doesn't care. He goes forward. The Devourer comes through, and Pace is going to live. Dindin is getting some good damage into that back line. And now Keen is going to go down. Chovy's here all alone and still can't take out Dindin. And he's oh. going to be taken down. The charm is huge after the flash there from Chovy. And Ongshim, they get a drink, they get two kills, and they're running at the Baron. And now Dindin's just getting, making progress in the side lane. Oh, now we have a big knockup coming in, and now Peter's going to be isolated. Fiesta does make his way in now as Canyon is in that back line. Gio's in a lot of trouble here as the Q will be followed up on. The bailout coming out, but a little bit too little and too late. Genji find their angle, and yes, Dundin is up in the top side. He's still hitting that inner turret, but doesn't feel like Genji really cared too much about it as the Lee Sin a bit out of range there. Canyon not able to follow up, and Keen also not able to get the kill done. I mean, they do see him. So let's see how they deal with this one. Once again, it's a very similar position to the last fight. As again, the same engage comes through and Pace is just dead. He's in the front line. A huge Q comes through from the a Aatrox here as Keen trying to do it all by himself, but he's not going to be able to. And now Dundin 
Trying to move forward here. He nearly gets knocked up, but that should be Cloud Soul here for Nongshim. Another big fight win for them. Yeah, huge engage once again from Sylvie. They're nailing the combo, and you can see why they had the priority on this duo together. So much value now. Dundun's fishing. It's true. <laughs> the range just gets so incredibly large. As, oh, God. That is just one way to win the team fight as well. SPS is like, well, I'm not even going to bother. Pressing my buttons didn't even look like he had time as it was perfectly timed. Oh. All right, the wall's going to come down here as well. Just trying to keep Sylvie out of the pit. It does look like, and let's see if they, yeah, he's not even going to go for it. In the 4v5, they're just going to let the Baron go. And now the Q is going to land here down onto Sylvie. He's just trying to hop away and get away from them, but they're on the wrong side of the rift. As Gen Z say, okay, cool, you can be behind us. We're yes, just going to push being. mid. As, yeah, the TP is going to come in, but look at the damage that Sylvia's taken already is he's just going to go down for free. And now they don't have a jungler here. Tiu also having to flash away. The charm is blocked perfectly by Lahens. And Fiesta not able to do anything. Genji sticking true as a five-man unit. Managing to find that kill on a Sylvie. And the thing is, because we didn't get that set up, time and... Oh, I think he well. sees you. <laughs> and they're just stopping the backs here. They're just allowing them to, uh, you know, the teammates to come in. Oh, a very man. nice angle on the kick as Fates Call will come out. Gio is desperate on the bailout, but it will not matter. It's Gen G now pushing mid with their Baron buff. And we had, uh, well, oh, man. we have an engage from Renata Glass. Kind of unfortunate, oh. but uh, all of our Renatas try to do this. Sylvie trying to get in there, trying to catch them off guard with the counter engage. Not really going to work out. They do get the flash out of Jovi, but it is a free vein kill on the backside of this fight as here comes Lahans on the engage. And now Sylvie will be the second one to go down. Penta angle potentially here for Keen as he is on the double. As uh, there it is, triple coming in, and that's going to be a steal from Pays. So no Penta this time around, but it still should be the 2 0 from Gen G. Canyon, he's got a GA. This time he actually can't just run at them with no fear in the world. As down will go the Nexus turrets, and down will go Gnome Shim. As Gen G do pick up the 2 0 tonight. <laughs> oh god, what have I done? I got to get out of here. Yeah. You know, it was pretty even for a lot of the game, and then it just kind of feels on a coin. It's like, okay, well. We win now. Thank you very much, guys. This is Deer for the POG Universe Translation, joined by Chovy and Canyon on the side of Genji, who have reached the first 14 wins of spring. Chovy, you now have reached 110, uh, 1100 POG points. How do you feel? Now I'm the first place in the POG standings, but I don't think there is a big difference between first and second, so I believe that anyone will be able to chase me down uh, for the first place, so I can't get my let my guard down. And Canyon, how do you feel? Really happy that we're able to keep our place in the standings. In game one, Chovy, you picked Cassadin into Talia, and it was a pick that could have gotten pressured early. So what led you to pick this mold, uh, bold move? I can't really share exactly why. Uh, I can say that it was a good pick because uh, there's a talk within the team. It's a it's a strategy that I cannot leak. So now, a fed Cassidy really turns the game around. What really gave you the control was this next highlight here. Canyon pulls a steal, and Chovy gets three kills right here. So can you walk us through what happened here? So the enemy actually got in a really bad position while trying to get Baron. And I think we were able to secure Baron and also uh, clean up after this team fight. Canyon, did you predict that you would steal the Baron? The enemy had Ralan Callista, so I think I was just trying to predict that my smite, and I got pretty lucky. So in game two, the opposing team swapped their mid laner out and selected red side and took top vein as their last pick. So did you predict any of these moves? So while playing solo queue, I know how OP top vein is, and I told Keen that he should try. I think we're just very aware of how good it is. And so Canyon, what did you consider as 
an important factor after this draft. I believe uh, that as long as we target down the vein, it would be an easy game, and I think that actually worked really well. Yeah, so Canyon, you really focused down and pressured the vein, and it looks like your skill distribution against Ari was on point as well. And as an undefeated Lee Sin player, what is your secret to maintaining your Lee Sin skills? As much as I play a lot of Lee Sin in uh, solo queue, I think I just have to practice Sonic Wave, uh, your Q skills in solo queue, and that's probably how you get better at Lee Sin. And until the middle of game two, the enemy took every objective, but there was this one moment where you really turned everything around. And Talia pulled an insane seismic shove, so... You know, it was at Baron, and I didn't really expect that I would hit anyone, but I knew that they were there, so I got... I got a lucky. I got pretty lucky because I was able to hit two people. And over numerous games, many see the mid jungle synergy between you two improve over time. So, what are your thoughts on this? Do you feel this firsthand? Personally, even from the beginning, we had really good synergy. It just went really well. And I don't know if I can say that I can feel firsthand that we are improving our synergy. I feel like it does work really well in practice and on stage, it's always different. So Chobi believes that it has always been there. But what about you, Canyon? I think I agree. Uh, along with Chovy, there are a lot of really good players in our team, so that's probably what enables us to have such good synergy, or what it looks like. So Genji is on an unstoppable mon momentum, and you have not dropped a single game in round two, so is an undefeated round two something we can look forward to? Like we're very determined to win. I think we can definitely aim for an undefeated round two. And you will play D plus Kia next. And it'll be uh, your against your former teammates, Chovy. Please share your resolutions with your fans. Lately, uh, when we watch our VODs, uh, we definitely have a lot of things that we can improve on, so we'll make sure that we are prepared. And Canyon, we'll make sure that we are prepared at, to win against D plus Kia in our next match. And this will be the end of the interview, and back to the space.